Osborne has because if you were like us back here, you're cringing, saying, what's going on down there? It's the same story I was going again. nuts. I was going nuts. And you saw the, we were watching a little bit on TV because we can't get that close. Some of the expressions Tom made, but you're right. If anybody on earth deserves a national championship more than Tom Osborne, I don't know who the heck it is. It's a tremendous accomplishment for the team, for Tom, the coaching staff, and the entire state of Nebraska. The ones that never lost their faith in this club and all the rest of the football teams. And I think this team proved just exactly how hard it is to come down here to Miami and beat Miami in a national championship game. And they did it, Merlin. I'm, I'm exhausted. Dave, all throughout the game, we were hearing about Miami's team speed. Uh, just how fast were the Hurricanes? And, and how did we shut them down in the fourth quarter? Oh, they were so fast. You can't believe it. I think we beat up their line, John. Uh, they got some, started getting some penalties called. They started uh, uh, putting a lot of pressure on uh, Costa, uh, the end rush, and uh, a lot of the problems for him came from the outside. And the backs just picked it up. Everybody picked it up. And Nebraska stayed as quick as they were at the beginning. And Miami got tired, I think, and slowed down a little bit. You know, they scored those touchdowns on plays just like lightning. And those little receivers, they got are really, really fast. But Nebraska did the job on James Stewart, the Miami running back, and they finally got to Costa enough that they slowed him down, made him think a little bit, had a little doubt. And then, uh, like I said, Nebraska's freshness at the end of the game took over. <laughs> <laughs> and they finally wore down Warren, Warren Sapp. He was dominating there for, for a while, but he uh, wasn't around oh. the fourth quarter. He is a great, great football player, but I'll tell you what, he's only human. He got tired just like everybody else. They hammered him just like they did everybody else. Corey, Corey Schlesinger. Schlesinger. Hey, we got Corey Schlesinger. Corey, how you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? How you feel? Really good right now. Very good. How excited are you, Corey? Has anything ever happened like this to you before? No, not winning the national championship. Getting two touchdowns in the national championship game. This has never happened before. You just got to, you know, we were, the team came back from such heartbreak all season long and and problems and even in this game they had some problems too and they came back and put it all together at the end yeah yeah the whole season was pretty rough and I think that's what made the team a little bit stronger towards the end of the year and we knew coming in here we could probably wear these guys down play our best football and win that's tremendous Corey congratulations thank God you. bless you thank you national championship buddy thank you. That's tremendous. Eric, how you doing, pal? All right, doing real good, real good. What do you good. think, man? Oh, this is great. This is tremendous. Uh, going through all this perseverance that we had through the season and all the ups and downs and to top it off like this. What more can you ask for? Husker players and fans haven't felt this way national championships in 72, and they haven't even felt this way after a bowl game for six or seven years. That's right. You know, I, watching all those games, living in Nebraska and watching Nebraska football and all the hard times I had, this, this makes all that just disappear and this makes this that much sweeter. Who do you want to say hi to back in Nebraska, buddy? I want to say hello to my parents, Ann and Leroy Stokes, and my sister Kim. I want to say what's up to my frat, Ada Chapter, Nebraska Lincoln. What's up, yo? <laughs> Congratulations, Eric. Right. Enjoy Thank it, man. Thank you very Enjoy much. it. Enjoy it. Hey. Merlin, John, everybody. Everybody's enjoying this. Now they got a chant going, Penn State sucks. Penn State's a good football team, <laughs> but I don't think they're going to win the national championship. I don't care what the score is tomorrow. I don't think anybody could have done what Nebraska did tonight. Come down here and play Miami in Miami at the Orange Bowl and win the national championship. Dave, you were in the press box for much of the game watching it. I know that a lot of the media likes to bash the Huskers. What was it like in the first half? Where it, the it was driving me nuts. They used part of the press room we were in up there for overflow fans. Then they come up to us and they say, don't clap or cheer. This is a working press box. Okay, so we're sitting on our hands. On the other end, everybody that every time they make a play, everybody's clapping and cheering. So then I go down and, uh, as I said, went back into that snack bar area where uh, nobody cared, and I enjoyed the game until I came back down here. Here we got Bill Byrne, Nebraska athletic director. He'll be here. What do you have? Well, <laughs> how sweet it is. Oh. Wasn't it great for Tom and for Nebraska? It was absolutely tremendous, Bill, and for the fans down here, they oh, were just they're tremendous. Unbelievable. You know, the, the athletic director from Miami commented after the game, he said, not only do you deserve to be national champions, he said, but your fans are the best fans I've ever seen. We've known that for a long well, time. Well, we have, but for to come down here and do what we did on national television in a place that's been, well, we've had a lot of heartaches here before. I think it was really fitting that we win the national championship here in the Orange Bowl. Isn't it going to be great to go back to the hotel and have smiles on everybody's faces? <laughs> I can hardly wait. I'm so excited. <laughs>
I just loving it. We we deserve this national championship. I mean, we clearly are the best college football team in the country. We slew the beast down here in Miami. Well, and I'm I'm glad. The dragon, huh? Yeah. Real, Let's put all that stuff about this being their house to, to, to bed. Well, we, we may not be back. <laughs> Who knows? We I may think play someplace our else. Our goal's next year to be in Tempe, Arizona. It's tremendous, Bill. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, thank you. Give my congratulations all to everybody right. on the and, staff, and too. Thanks, all the Nebraskans. Thanks for being such great fans. Okay. Bill Byrne, athletic director. Frank Solich. Oh, Frankie. <laughs> You've been through this, haven't you, pal? Uh, well, no greater feeling than to get it done. And really feel proud of the kids the way they came back and got it done you know the scenario was tremendous feel great for coach Osborne feel great for these kids uh, they deserved it tremendous effort by him you know this is so much sweeter because for six or seven years Frank we've walked into the locker room and listened to the other crowd cheering and screaming out here and everybody yeah. getting up and having a great time now it's our turn huh? you, know, you know another thing is uh, I think you got to pay a lot of tribute to our fans they came down here we must have had a fifth of the uh, attendance here in the stadium, and it made a difference. It took away from, from a, just a dominating crowd that they had, and, and at, at times our crowd was a factor in the game. Tremendous support by those people, and, and we really appreciate it. I was saying if there is, if it's true that energy can pass from people to people, the energy of the 20,000 fans up here went right down on that field to the players. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. Our, our players felt like it was, to a degree, a home game. We've been here in this stadium now four years in a row and plus we've had so many people here we had a theme song coming out of the coming out of the dressing room it, it, oh, it felt great. like home just great Congratulations, all right thank you Frank. appreciate it look who we got here oh robert <laughs> <laughs> okay bob i will i i don't know where he is right now all right okay, okay. okay yeah. robert congratulations thank buddy you. thank you tell us this feeling today tonight and the feeling, what, 25, 26 years ago with the back-to-back -back national championships? I tell you the truth, I think this one was greater because <laughs> we've been waiting for this, and Tom has done such a great job coaching. He did a great job when I was coaching, helping me. Without him, we might not have won the national championships. And so tonight it really showed he did a tremendous job coaching, and the team followed him. And I was very happy when he won this. This is a wonderful reward for all the years of work and, and effort by the entire coaching staff and all the players who played before. You're right. It was a great day, great night. How do you feel? Oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> Real wonderful. Do you remember that feeling 26 years ago? Is it the same? No, I think it's a little better. It's better. <laughs> That's tremendous, Bobby. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you for your help. Oh, you betcha. He must know about my corn cob. He said thanks for my help, huh? Nancy Osborne. Nancy. Good morning, everybody. Nancy, you as you as much as anybody, I have to personally thank you for all the like Tom said at the press conference, all the hours and years that you raised the kids that he wasn't here working so hard with the team and everything, and now you can take that uh, unfinished business and put it in a scrapbook, huh? That's right. We're, we are really, really happy. <laughs> I'm just drenched. <laughs> are you drenched and uh, all the energy gone too, or how do you feel? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, this is a great moment, and I'm really proud of Tom and the team and all the people that make this work, because there are so many behind the scenes that nobody ever knows about. It's just been a total victory, and to have both quarterbacks be part of it even made it sweeter, you know. Could it, and it even sweeter because it didn't look like we were going to win the game. So yeah. many bad things happened, and all of a sudden, it all turned around. At it the did. End. The fourth quarter was ours as usual. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, you Nancy Osborne. The one I was talking about, Murray, you remember the press conference where Tom talked about all the years he's been away, and right. somebody asked him if he'd go back and do it again, and he said. After being away from his family so long, he didn't know if he would have or not. But uh, this national championship sure has to be satisfying for him. Tom, I don't know. I, I didn't think you'd come out. I don't know what to say, Coach. Well, here I am. Everybody's <laughs> got to be somewhere, right? <laughs> we, we, we taped your, uh, your, the, the comments you made earlier. We we're going to mm -hmm. run the tape, but this is so much better. How do you feel? We talked to Nancy already. Mm -hmm. She said she's exhausted but feels great. Oh, yeah. Well, Nancy, she'll celebrate all night. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go back, go to bed, and... Uh, but I, I'm very pleased. I'm really pleased with the way our players played. And uh, to beat Miami in Miami is a very difficult assignment. I, I really think it was probably the toughest assignment we could have drawn in uh, any bowl, uh, even tougher than Penn State at Pasadena or 
Alabama or Florida State or Florida and the and the and the sugar. So uh, uh, you know, I was I just felt if we could stay close, that we had worked so hard in practice that we thought our strength and our conditioning would maybe take hold in the fourth quarter. We talked to the players about that, and we told them the fourth quarter would be ours. And in the second half, we even chose to uh, to defend this end zone start of the half, so we would have that one at the end because that was the least noisy one. And we figured in the fourth quarter that's where we were going to do our scoring, and and I think the players bought into it too. Unfortunately, we just didn't do it in the third quarter. I think I had them too, uh, too uh, keyed into we we're going to win it in the fourth, so they they waited to do it. But um, anyway, it was a great team win. Punting was good. You know, Erstad made some great plays. Defense uh, three and out about three or four times there in the fourth quarter, which which was the whole deal. And then offensively, we we got things going. I think their defense was really kind of worn down toward the end. Your decision to continue practice on an interim basis, but to keep it going all the way through December, turned out to be exactly what the team needed to be in the tip-top condition to play this game. Well, it seems like these passing teams like Florida State uh, can can take a layoff of a couple weeks and they can come back and be pretty good. But when you're doing the traps and the counter sweeps and the options and a lot of kind of things that are kind of intricate. It seems like that layoff, a couple, three bowl games we played, we just never got our timing back. So we decided we'd go back to doing it the way we used to many years ago and just never quit practicing. And and I thought our timing was better tonight. We had some doggone turnovers that about killed us. But uh, if we play without turnovers, we probably win pretty good here. We might win by 16, 17 points. Have you ever experienced a, a team like this, a season like this, with so many mm -hmm. highs and so many lows? Well, I've never had a team that's had this much resolve. You know, from day one, they were determined that, uh, I mean, we didn't hardly get off the field last year, and they were saying they were going to be back and they were going to win it. And uh, they had a tremendous offseason, a uh, tremendous spring ball, tremendous summer, a uh, great uh, fall camp getting ready for the kickoff classic, and then they worked their tails off for the last month uh, getting ready for this. So. Tremendous work ethic, and um, but uh, a very unified group, and they knew what they wanted to do, and it wasn't nothing was going to stay in their way, whether it was injuries or what. They they got it done, so I, I'm very proud of them. Was it Joe Paterno that told you, said to you that you win a national championship when you least expect it? Yeah, Joe mentioned that one time. He said uh, sometime when you least expect it, uh, you'll win it. And, but I haven't won, we haven't won it yet. You know, you got to wait for the vote, and uh, they may vote. You know, Penn State may win 100 to nothing tomorrow, and. And uh, it's all over. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to enjoy tonight. And I really appreciate the Nebraskans' support. And you know, we had about 16,000 down here. And they made their presence known. And uh, we really appreciate all the people back in Nebraska. The, the thing that I felt the pressure coming in this game was just how many people were going to be devastated if we didn't win it. You know, because everybody's saying it's, it's our turn, it's your year, it's this and that. And hey, in athletics, uh, you don't take turns. You know, <laughs> you play Miami and Miami, usually you'd. You know, it's tough to win. It was two times in the last 60 shots down here. So uh, I thought it was an uphill climb, but uh, the players uh, went out and did it. God bless you, Coach. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. Thank you yeah, very thank much, Tom. Congratulations. Okay, thank right. you. Could anyone argue that night that Tom Osborne wasn't the most deserving coach in the country to take home the national title? The faithful back in Nebraska were delirious. Big Red fans celebrated the Huskers' first national championship in 23 years. And our cameras were live in Omaha and Lincoln to capture all the excitement. Dave, thanks a lot. We're going to give you a break for a few minutes. You can recover your vocal cords and do a little celebrating on your own. But right now, we're going to see what's happening here in Omaha. Let's go to Vanita Sakar, who is standing by in West Omaha at the Scorecard Lounge. Vanita?
I think it was a long time coming. And it was well deserved. The Oscars are number one. How about the Gordon Oscars? Was there ever a point in the game that you lost faith where you thought, no, it's not going to happen? I, I didn't hear what you said. Is there ever a point in the game when you lost faith? No. Was it never. Never. We may, not, we may not have played well in the first half, but never count the Gordon Oscars out. Second half is our game. Tommy Frazier showed him we are number one. We will stay number one. We are the national champion. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're thinking. You had predictions at the beginning of the game. You had hopes, just like every fan. Tell me how you're feeling tonight after I'm very so many happy. years of disappointment. Very happy. It's a long time coming, and we deserve it. Tom deserves it. There's been so much disappointment in now the big championship. What goes through your mind? Vanita, thanks for hanging in there. Okay, we're having a blast out here. We'll come back to you a little bit later. Okay. We'll go back to uh, sure Dave Weber. Here. I'm sure they'll still be here celebrating. We should have got her a football suit, Billy. <laughs> man, oh, man, she's tougher than Warren Sapp in that crowd. Way to go. There you see some of the great celebration going on tonight as Husker fans are going nuts, John. And, uh, perhaps uh, some Husker fans here in Omaha are going a little too crazy. A little too nuts down on 72nd and Dodge. Big crowds there, a lot of folks. The police want you to stay away from the area. There's already too many people there. Hey, anyway, the bars are going to be closing up, you know, in about a half an hour. So you don't <laughs> need to go down there to celebrate. They've got too many folks down there already. This is going to be a rough weekend for a lot of people. New Year's Eve last night, the Huskers winning tonight. Uh, There's going to be some sick time called in this week to a Romo place. Seltzer, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to go down to Lincoln now, where Gary Johnson, our Lincoln Bureau Chief, is standing by in the capital city. Gary, what do you have for us? Well, you mentioned the, the street parties going on in Omaha. We've just come down for a, come up to our office from downtown O Street, and it's like a war zone down there. People are going nuts. There's sidewalk parties going, and that's spilling off onto the street. Let's take a look at some of the video we just shot just moments ago as, as Husker fans celebrate this. I tell you what. They all want to be a part of this historic moment, so they rush TV cameras. I tell you, uh, State Bureau of Photographer Gary Omquist has some moves like Lawrence Phillips and was able to get this footage back to us uh, all in one piece. So, fan, so far, fans are behaving. There have been no acts of vandalism that we've seen. But if you're out and about tonight, you might drive really carefully because a lot of these people actually, you know, don't have safety uh, priority on their minds. So be sure and drive carefully as some people are really celebrating. Uh, we're told the Lincoln police are going to stay on duty uh, overtime tonight until the parties calm down. There's just a lot of uh, partying going on in downtown Lincoln right now as, as fans celebrate uh, this just wonderful uh, victory here in Lincoln. John Merlin. Well, Gary, you know, uh, we're kind of joking about this, and it's great to see the celebration, but there's always been an ugly side to great championships, whether in the pros or in college, and that's people over-celebrating. We hope that's... The, the seeds of that aren't starting right now. I tell you, the, the worst I saw down here right now were snowballs being okay. thrown, and people were so excited they weren't hitting their target anyway. As <laughs> long as we can keep into that. All right. Welcome back to our post-game celebration. Merlin Klaus with John Chapman here. And, John, we're going to go right back out to the scorecard lounge where Benita Saka, our own... Uh, Strong linebacker reporter <laughs> is uh, in the midst of the crowd with a former Husker. Benita, go ahead. Well, Merlin and Chaps, I think you might recognize this man right next to me. There's George Achola, a former Husker eyeback. George, what did you feel as you watched your team win a national championship? It was, uh, it, it, it was a feeling of peace. It was like um, a long journey was finally over, even though I was not officially on the team, I feel that I was still a part of that journey. And when I saw them win it, win it, it was like I could finally rest. That part of my life was over with. Nebraska had won a national championship, and even though I wasn't a member of the team, I still was a national champion. What was it like for you when the final seconds ticked down? Was a part of you out there on that field too? It was like, um, I guess it's, 
if you could call it a spiritual feeling, it was close to that because I was watching the clock tick down, and I was like, everybody around me was jumping up and down. They couldn't believe the game was over. But I just kind of sat there and looked and said, oh my God, it's finally over. We've got a national championship. Coach Osborne's won the national championship. Nebraska finally has some respect nationally, and we're the, we're the number one team. A lot of celebrating beginning, a lot of celebrating tomorrow. John Chapman has some important news for Husker fans. Listen to this now, John. Better listen to this closely now. We've had a lot of calls from people wondering when the Huskers will return to Lincoln. If you want to see the team tomorrow, do not, I repeat, do not go to the airport. The team will be taken directly to the Devaney Center. Arrival time is expected to be about 1 o'clock. The Devaney Center will open to the public at noon. There is no charge. It is on a first-come, first-served basis. We're told, we've been told that about only uh, 15,000 people will be let inside. Again, if you want to see the team, they'll be at the Devaney Center around 1 p.m. on Monday. All right. Thanks a lot, John. And I know our Channel 6 crews will be there. We're going to be breaking in for live reports in our football coverage, because tomorrow is a holiday, January 2nd, a lot that of football uh, on Channel 6 and on the other networks. And now another reminder, here in Omaha, uh, police once again are asking that um, motorists and pedestrians, whoever, avoid 72nd and Dodge because there's a lot of people gathering there. It's, uh, you know, not the best situation to be in, so avoid that and do yourself a favor and kind of alleviate the situation. We're going to continue our coverage here of the... Orange Bowl celebration, the national championship. Stay with us for more right here on Channel 6. After two and a half hours on the air, our news crews decided to call it a night. But within hours, our Channel 6 special coverage continued. On January 2nd, Nebraska's Orange Bowl heroes arrived back in Lincoln to some cold weather. But with 13,000 fans at a fever pitch inside the Devaney Center, that welcome home was warm indeed. Channel 6 cameras were live there, too. John Nicely picks up the story in Lincoln. It was early morning when the crowd started gathering outside the Devaney Center. Number one. The doors weren't supposed to open until noon. There it is. By 9 a.m., there were already 8,000 people outside. <laughs> By noon, there were 14,000. It took 11 minutes to fill up every seat in the house. Danny Knee's defending Big 8 champs were just finishing practice, so he told them, put on a show. Back outside, people were willing to pay to get inside. Admission was free, but the doors were locked. Too many people. So here's where the overflow went, to the airport, for the team's arrival at 1. Back in the Devaney Center, the news came, the plane, two hours late. So the basketball team put on another show, spelling Husker one letter at a time. The lines were long for concessions and for souvenirs. How come you don't have anything on? Huh? Back at the airport. Party like crazy. And back at the Devaney Center. It just made me want to go out there and play football for the Nebraska Cornets. Finally, 2.45, the team has landed. The Devaney Center still rocking. First out of the plane, Tom Osborne. Inside the Vanny, anticipation. Outside, a mob intercepts the bus. It broke, but we did <laughs> We could touch them as they came through. We videotaped them all. Got them on video. And finally, back inside. How do you celebrate a national championship in Nebraska? Like this. been waiting 23 years for this. Now we're right back where we belong, on top. I just got a, a couple things to say. On behalf of the, uh, the entire team, I'd like to thank Coach Osborne, the best football coach in the country.
the fans and everyone here, you guys are second to none. You're absolutely awesome. And I just want you to know, we didn't win this just for ourselves. We won this for the whole state of Nebraska. Go Big Red. When uh, Corey Schlesinger scored that second touchdown in the fourth quarter, I kind of felt bad for Penn State there for about five seconds. Um, seriously, though, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out here and supporting us. I think it's pretty obvious you guys are the best fans in the nation. doesn't get any better than this. Again, like Terry, I just want to thank the coaching staff and especially Coach Osborne for all he's done, um, for all the criticism he's received, um, all the highs and lows that he's had and not having reached a national championship until this year. And Coach really makes a big point out of the fact that he believes that it's the pursuit of a national title that is more important than actually winning it. And because of that, I think he is all the more deserving for winning this national title. And again, I just want to thank you all for coming out here and supporting us that this, this game wasn't just, like Terry said, this game wasn't for just our football team, it was for the entire state of Nebraska. Sure, I scored two touchdowns, but all I did is run the ball. It was the offensive lineman, the receivers blocking downfield that did everything. All I had to do is run into the end zone. Too easy. Way too easy. Thank you, everybody, for coming and do the best. You know, for many, many years now, we have been number one in academic All-Americans. And it's great to have the title one on the playing field as well as in the classroom come together at this university today. This is a great day for a great football program with great players, a great coaching team, a great opportunity that was not missed but taken last night. with the greatest fourth quarter maybe ever in Nebraska football history. Abdul had a nice game last night. He, uh, he said he wanted to make a speech. I, I didn't say I wanted to make a speech. I just wanted to thank the fans for coming out and supporting us through the whole year when times was getting hard for us and we had a few players down and the fans just stuck behind us. And on behalf of the football team, I just want to say thanks to y'all. Damon, Damon's always got something to say here. Damon? Here he is, Don. <laughs> I'm a little lost for words right now. I just want to say thanks. Uh, you guys have been great, especially the guys back in Miami. You know, it, it didn't really seem like their home game. Even when it was 17-9 to 9 with eight minutes left, we knew we had a chance, and I hope you guys felt the same. See the national champions in college football right there. While the Huskers were appearing in the Devaney Center, Penn State was making its bid for number one in the Rose Bowl. The Nittany Lions downed Oregon 38 to 20. But when the polls came out the next day, Nebraska was the overwhelming choice for number one. In the Associated Press poll, the Huskers received 51 and a half votes from the media for number one. Penn State ended up with 10 and a half votes. Colorado was solid number three, Florida State fourth, and Alabama was fifth. It was the same story in the USA Today CNN coaches poll. Nebraska received 54 of the 62 first place votes. Only eight coaches sided with Penn State. Colorado was again third, followed by Alabama 
and Florida State. On January 3rd, Coach Osborne was presented with the National Championship Trophy, the ceremony taking place outside the coach's office. Coach Osborne, very proud to be here this morning to recognize really not only your achievement at the Orange Bowl, but also the continued excellence over the long haul that University of Nebraska has demonstrated, not only athletically, but also academically in the development of the fine men that have come from the University of Nebraska. Um, to that end, we're here today to present the trophy, but also University of Nebraska will receive from Sears a $20,000 academic scholarship. So it is in part our part partnership with the American Football Coaches Association, um, our store here in Lincoln, and the 320,000 employees of Sears that are proud to be here to recognize your victory in the Orange Bowl and the national championship. Congratulations, Thank Coach you. Osborne. Thank you. And Coach, uh, it's become customary as putting the plaque on the front of the trophy. Okay. So, Let's see if I can get the right spot here. Give me a little direct. We're honored to be um, named the number one team. Um, I guess uh, it's all over now. The votes are in, and I think if you win 13 games, uh, you can lobby a little bit. We think we've played some very good opponents this year. Uh, nobody's, uh, you know, they've, they've made a sweat, but nobody's, uh, it hasn't been luck. We haven't won any games where you say, well, you, you backed into that one. And so I think uh, defense was tremendous all year. The offense was uh, very good. And the kicking game was outstanding. And above all, uh, I think a great attitude. Uh, really feel privileged to work with a, a bunch of players that was this committed to one goal, it was this unified, and um, it was on track through the whole year. My thanks to everyone, you know, especially Coach Osborne, the, the rest of the coaching staff, the strength staff. You know, it was a it was a total team effort all year. We we played hard, we never gave up, and, and it paid off for us. So I just like to say thank you. Like Terry again, I just like to thank uh, the coaching staff and um, the entire University of Nebraska football staff for all the work that they put in with the team. The, past few years. Um, I'd also like to thank the fans, um, everybody who went down to the game, all the fans up here in Lincoln. Um, believe it or not, we could hear you yelling through those TV sets. Um, it was great. I don't think we have any better fans in the nation, and it really helped us this year. Well, I, I think the thing that has uh, stood out about this team was their, uh, their resolve from day one, which went back to probably January 1st, January 2nd uh, last year. I think there was a lot of commitment uh, in the off season and during the summer and during the season to get back down to Miami and to win it. And, uh, and I, I don't think I've ever been around a team that was that unified or that committed to, to one proposition. And uh, I thought that the, um, the egos were um, held in check. I think everybody did what they had to do to have a great team. Uh, very, very few ego problems, very few uh, problems with focus, uh, not much of an up and down type of season where you were ready one week and the next week you just barely got by. They, they played hard every week and they came, they overcame a lot of, uh, a lot of adversity in terms of just, uh, you know, some key people not being around all the time. And, and uh, so I, I thought they did a great job. And, uh, you know, I'm still the same guy that lost seven straight bowls. I'm no smarter today than I was last year or the year before, but the, the coaches did a great job, the players did a great job. It was truly a night to remember. Nebraska, the national champions of college football. We're glad you decided to relive this memorable win by the Huskers. Was it the special ear of corn that willed them to victory? Was it the hopes, prayers, and tears of thousands of fans, or just the hard work, dedication, and resolve of the Huskers themselves? Some of us like to think they all played a part. From all of us at Channel 6, thanks for joining us. We leave you now with a tribute to the national champions. <laughs>
I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of you. How do you feel, babe? You feel great.